Hi everyone, I'm Chuck McLennan for Buick Know How. In this program, we're going to cover anti-lock brakes, but we're going to look at it from a slightly different perspective. As you all know, anti-lock brakes have been available on Buicks for many years. Several systems have been used by the various car lines. Regardless of the type of system, they all share two common goals. One, stop the car as quickly as possible, and two, maintain steering control throughout the stop. The Tevis Mark IV is an older system that was one of the first to use solenoids and valves. The Roadmaster used a completely different Bosch system. ABS-6 uses a motor pack design that turns gears and moves pistons to modulate system pressure to the wheels. The new DBC-7 anti-lock brake system utilizes solenoids and valves to modulate pressure. But there's one common thread that runs through each of these systems, and that would be noise. Some customers have been concerned about ABS noise since Buick began offering ABS brakes. Although many customers know what to expect with their brake system, whenever a new system is offered, it seems that customer concerns arise. This new DBC-7 anti-lock brake system has several unique features, and one of its operating characteristics is the possibility of ABS noise. And remember, everything about this system is in your reference manual. We turned to the experts at Delphi Chassis Systems Engineering and spoke with Tom Fornari. Tom is one of the engineers directly involved with the DBC-7 system. The know-how crew recently spent some time talking with Tom about the new DBC-7 system that's on all 99 Regals and Centuries. Let's listen as Tom explains Buick's new brake system by first comparing it with the ABS-6 system it replaced. ABS-6 is a uh, what we call a piston and motor based uh, ABS system. Uh, the 98 vehicle Buick Century and Buick Regal uh, modulator was attached to the master cylinder. If you had traction control there was a separate, a separate uh, modulator uh, under hood and the uh, electronic controller or EBCM was located in the passenger compartment. These are the various components that performed ABS traction control on the Regal GS, for instance, in 1998 on the Buick Century and Buick Regal. ABS-6 was replaced primarily because of, uh, pa to conserve packaging space, to reduce mass, and uh, to lower the cost of ABS. Um, the new 99 brake system or ABS system uh, reduces uh, mass by 50%, reduces packaging space by approximately 50%, as well as reducing costs, giving you the same level of performance as 98. Those are the three major reasons behind going to the new ABS system. ABS-6 performance, uh, in my opinion, is world class. It meets uh, all the federal requirements and VTS requirements that we have established for it. It allowed us to utilize ABS on uh, lower line vehicles because of its uh, cost at the time. So ABS-6, I think its strength is uh, definitely performance and cost at the time when it was introduced. DBC-7 is a solenoid-based ABS, which many other manufacturers are making. It is the design, solenoid-based ABS is now a design standard in the industry. Uh, it allows or enables a manufacturer or supplier uh, to go to a lower level of mass, a lower level of uh, packaging space. Uh, in addition to, uh, to reducing cost, uh, we have taken three dis distinct or discrete components that being a TCS modulator, an ABS modulator or brake pressure modulator valve, and a EBCM or electronic brake controller. We have up integrated or combined those three distinct or discrete components into one package, and that is the DBC-7 brake system. For 99, the base brake system is uh, identical to 98. There are no changes. Calipers, drums uh, are identical. Uh, the only difference that you would notice if you consider part of the base brakes would be the brake proportioners are now in the rear of the vehicle. Master cylinder for ABS-6 was a four-port master cylinder. For uh, DBC-7, we went to a two-port master cylinder. That provided us a, a path to transmit the hydraulic fluid from the master cylinder to the brake pressure modulator valve, which in 99 is not connected to the master cylinder, so it required a new master cylinder in this case. The bracket is a four-point mount. There are uh, two studs that protrude through the shock tower uh, that have nuts on the, uh, the opposite side at the wheel liner inner. And 
uh, we have a fastener that comes through through the shock tower uh, into the engine compartment. So that's the third mount. Then the fourth mount is a PAL nut. There's a stud on the shock tower. This bracket is what our ABS unit mounts to. Underneath the brake pressure modulator valve, you will see a series of uh, or two sets of grommets that we're using. We call uh, uh, one grommet uh, a rate washer or cup it, because that's what it looks like. Um, the other grommet inserts into the bracket itself. The design of the DBC-7 mounting system calls for the use of elastomeric materials. One would think that an elastomeric material would become softer as it reaches engine compartment temperature. However, the rate cup expands and compresses between the bolt head and the bracket grommet. The accumulator plate should not be removed by a service technician that when you order a replacement part, what you would receive is a brake pressure modulator valve with that plate on the bottom. That plate is actually a functional part. You do not want to remove that. The BPMV has two inlet ports and four outlet ports. One, the, the four outlet ports go to each corner of the vehicle. Um, we decided to air-proof for the plant further and for service um, those four outlet ports. So you'll notice that uh, some are 10 millimeters, some are 11 millimeter in diameter, and they have different threads, uh, coarse and fine, and they switch between them as you go across the top of the brake pressure modulator valve. They go from coarse to fine to coarse to fine. So that is further air proofing for not only the plant but the service community as well. The DBC-7 system, 499, is identical in, in initialization from 98 in terms of uh, how it uh, initializes. Noise is a little better than 98. Primarily there are three ways that it will initialize. If your foot is off the brake pedal at crank, the 99 system will initialize. If your foot is on the brake pedal and you are less than 10 miles per hour and you take your foot off the brake, it will initialize at that point. If your foot is on the brake and you continue to keep your foot on the brake pedal until after 10 miles an hour, it will at 10 miles an hour initialize at that point. Uh, in 98, you had pistons that were moving up and down and motors that were running and gears that were actually being turned. But 99, you will, you will hear uh, the noise um, at crank, but it is masked very well by the engine. Now that we've covered the basics, let's talk for a moment about testing and how Tom goes about this very important area of engineering development. The Delphi chassis system engineers do the bulk of their winter weather brake system validation at an Air Force base on the eastern side of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. There, they have access to long stretches of concrete runways on which to test their ABS systems. Parts are snow covered, while other areas have long stretches of ice. But what do they do in the summer months? Tom's group rents time at the Grand Oaks Ice Arena in Howell, Michigan. Here, even in summer, they can continue to validate the new DBC-7 system. There, they can make calibration changes between runs to get the most out of the car. Now let's go back to Tom Fernari. In ABS engineering, we categorize surfaces by their uh, coefficient of friction. For high coefficient, we typically test on asphalt and concrete. Typically, for a passenger car, you can uh, pull about a G and D cell. Uh, we also test on low coefficient surfaces such as ice and typically that's categorized in about a 0.1 G D cell level. In between those two surfaces, we have a whole host of uh, other medium co surfaces which we call uh, genite basalt tiles, ceramic tiles, and typically those uh, coefficients of friction and D cell levels are in the neighborhood of 0 0.5, 0 0.4 G's D cell. So we test on all these surfaces as well. We test on gravel. Uh, and chatter bumps and some other surfaces as well. The driver's foot creates master cylinder pressure. High coefficient surface stops require the maximum hydraulic pressure output from the brake system, about 1,000 psi. The full 1,000 psi line pressure goes to each wheel. Uh, a high coefficient stop is uh, described by, uh, you know, like a 60 mile an hour stop to zero you're going to have a lot of tire noise. There's going to be a lot of extraneous noise in the vehicle. So that's typical of a high coefficient ABS stop. 
you will get uh, a lot of ambient noise, as I call it. Low coefficient stopping, such as ice, uh, is a very quiet stop, typically, if you, if you have a large uh, sheet of ice. And a lot of our testing is done on long surfaces that are ice, but typically those surfaces do not have a lot of tire noise or ambient noise. And you will pick up the DVC-7 system uh, cycling the solenoids, as well as at the end of a stop, you will hear some pump motor run on. But typically, an, an ice stop is characterized by a lot of activity in the brake modulator. Um, and this is symptomatic of, of the type of surface that you're on. Low coefficient stops do not require much hydraulic pressure output from the brake system. So the DBC-7 system only allows about 50 PSI to each wheel. So a stop on a low coefficient surface means that master cylinder pressure can be up to 10 times higher than line pressure. This difference in pressure at the BPMV makes the pump motor and solenoids work harder, causing noise. Yeah, it's the hydraulic fluid that because you've got pressure waves that run right through that fluid back into the front of the dash. There are damping chambers within the modulator that quiet the noise. I mean, the noise would be a lot louder. But you just have to explain that what the system is doing is giving you the maximum traction that's available, giving you the shortest stopping distance, giving you stability so that you can steer the vehicle around any obstacle. And, and the trade-off is that we are using a pump and solenoid system to do that, and the solenoids do make noise. That's the trade-off. You get the extra maneuverability, you get the uh, reduction in stopping distance. So that stability is being traded off for noise, but that noise is due to the solenoid cycling and the pump motor running. The know-how crew would like to thank Tom Fernari for all of his input, expertise, and candor regarding the new DBC-7 system. But I'd like to emphasize to dealership personnel that an ABS noise on ice issue is normal for the car. With that in mind, I'd like to introduce Ken Hope. Ken is a service advisor at Jeffrey Buick in Roseville, Michigan. We've invited Ken onto the know-how set to talk about the new DBC-7 system. Hi, Ken, and welcome to Buick Know How. Hi, Chuck. How can I help? Ken, as a service advisor, you try to keep cars out of the shop if their operating is designed. Is that a correct assumption? Yes, although I'm not a trained technician, Chuck, I do get to know these cars and can see the trends that develop at my dealership. Kind of after the fact. Right, but as I learn what's going on with each car line, I fold that into how I approach the next customer. First, and it's no secret, I try to keep my technicians busy fixing cars. So I treat my customers right, and I develop a relationship, and that keeps them coming back. How much explanation do you provide? That all depends. I explain to my customers in layman's terms what they should expect as far as what we're doing and what's going on with their car. That way I avoid surprises as much as possible. Well, now what if the customer's in for something that's easy to fix? I mean, uh, to you it's easy, but uh, don't customers see car trouble as a big inconvenience? I think most people do, but still, I help customers myself if I can. Maybe their change oil light needs to be reset or something simple like that. I can show them how to do that and send them on their way and everyone's happy. Yeah, but what if a car really doesn't need service? If a car doesn't need service and I send it into the shop anyway, I'm asking for trouble. It's human nature that the customer will automatically expect their car to act different, drive better or sound quieter along those lines. And if it comes out out of the shop and I say everything's okay and the customer doesn't perceive it as different, then my customer may think we didn't do anything or the techs don't know what they're doing. And frankly, Chuck, I don't need that. Sure. Well, Ken, now, we've already talked about this new analog brake system on the Regal and Century. It really works great, but on ice, well, some people may notice this noise issue. And they think that the car has a problem. Right. It's all how you handle the explanation. Some people don't want a lot of information, while others want to know everything. That's what I do. So. Here's the setup. Let's suppose it's late November in Michigan. That means snow and ice. Now let's say I'm one of those customers that wants to know everything. And I just brought my brand new Regal GS to you, and I think there's something wrong with its brakes. 
I tell you, they make a noise I've never heard before, and I want that car fixed. Now, knowing what you know about the DBC7 system, if I were one of your customers, what would you say? First, I'd ask you something like, when do you hear this brake noise? And if you say every time you put your foot on the brake pedal, then you just might have a potential brake concern. And, and if I say I'm not sure when? Then I'd ask you something like, do you hear the noise on dry pavement or on ice during easy, gradual stops or in a panic stop? With ABS, especially on ice, you don't need to press too hard to kick the ABS in. So I can narrow this down to an ABS noise on ice concern, which we know is normal. Now suppose I'm a little more demanding and I want to know why the noise is happening. Well, I tell you it's a hydraulic fluid vibration noise that's actually created by your ABS system. See this box here? This is your ABS unit, okay? And it's got eight on and off solenoids, little valves that control your brake pressure to each wheel in an ABS stop. Now, every time these eight solenoids turn on and off, little shock waves go right up the fluid in these pipes to your master cylinder here and it starts the vibration. Because it's bolted to the car, this area is affected and vibrates too. And well, honestly, inside a quiet car, this vibration is naturally louder, and that's what you're hearing. Well now, let's say I don't buy that. Then I ask you if you hear the same noise when you stop on dry pavement. If you say no, only on ice, then I pretty much know it's an ABS system that is normal for the car, and it actually is telling you that the analog brake system is at work stopping the car. So in a way, it's benefiting. And out of all the total number of times that you hit the brakes, only a handful of times involves ABS. Ken, I know you have to get back to work at the dealership, so I will say thank you for everyone at Buick Know How. Anytime, Chuck. Glad to help. See ya. Bye. Well, that wraps up our program for this month. With all this expert advice, you should now be able to discern what is normal for the 1999 Regal and Century models. See you next month.